Back, the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Krishnamurthy, is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Gramaglia, thank you for your service to the people of Buffalo. Um, I was born in India, and I immigrated first to Buffalo, New York. And so uh, the fact that uh, you said that it's a city of good neighbors uh, is very poignant for me. And I'm very sorry for the loss of all those lives in Buffalo. Um, the shooter in Uvalde used a what, what's called a Daniel Defense DDM V7, V7 rifle. It's a style of AR-15 rifle. It markets that rifle as, quote, a perfect rifle for everybody. This particular picture comes from their Twitter account on May 16th, 2022. Now, Commissioner, guns are the leading cause of death among young people aged uh, 24 and under. Guns kill far more kids than cigarettes, but we don't let cigarette companies market to children. Sir, you don't think it's appropriate for Daniel Defense or any manufacturer to market AR-15 style rifles or handguns or any other weapons to children, correct? I think that picture behind you is very disturbing, is what it is. And, and no, I don't believe that that should be the case. And why do you find that picture disturbing? How many children in our country, because of a lack of safe storage on weapons, have either accidentally taken their own lives or somebody else in that household or another friend within that house who was there visiting? It's, it's disturbing. Shortly after uh, the Daniel defense rifle was used in the Uvalde shooting, this picture was taken down from their Twitter account, and indeed their Twitter account was made private. I think they had second thoughts about advertising in, in this manner as well. Ms. Swearer, in 2019, while testifying before the House Judiciary Committee, uh, you went viral in a viral video talking about the lethality of AR-15s. You said, quote, your mother struggled to hit a stationary target from six yards out under ideal conditions, and then she picked up an AR-15, and I watched my mother put a fist-sized grouping of lead in the center mass of the target 20 yards out. When accuracy and stopping power matter, they are simply better. You said that, correct, Ms. Swear? Yes, I did. This is a picture of the 19 children and two teachers who died in Uvalde, Ms. Swear. You mentioned the AR-15 stopping power, but I got to believe these little children were not the ones you were talking about stopping, correct? No, I was talking about stopping the individual who showed up to shoot them. And the... Who showed up to shoot them, who did show up to shoot that individual, was a bunch of law enforcement officers with an AR-15. And Ms. Ms. Swear, your, your mic's not on, but... The green, the green light is on. It's okay, Tara, but it's on now. Okay. I, I can hear you, Ms. Swear. It's good. I can, I can hear Ms. Swear. Perhaps, per, perhaps you could switch with Mr. Saplina for a minute if, if his mic is working. Can you please suspend the time? The witness needs to be heard. Restore the time, please. Thank you. Congressman. I, can I repeat the question and then you can say the answer? Yeah, and, and if we could just stop the clock for a minute because we lost some time there. Could we change the placards too, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chris Morthy, did you want to repeat the question? Yes. Ms. Swear, uh, when you talked about the stopping power of these AR-15s, it wasn't these children that you were talking about stopping, obviously. No, I was referring to individuals like the one who went into that building and spent 78 minutes shooting them. And I hope, as was the case in Uvalde, that the people who show up to stop shooters like that and these have the AR-15 precisely for its stopping power. And that is exactly what happened in Uvalde. That and is this, why cops in this are case, routinely Swear, exempt from these, these prohibitions. This, this man legally purchased these AR-15 rifles, context. correct? And in this particular case, the shooter had legally purchased these AR-15 rifles and was able to stop and obviously end these lives for, forever. Yes. Now, Commissioner Gramaglia, I want to have I want to address you again, Commissioner. You know, guns are often uh, billed as essential to maintaining the freedoms we enjoy in America. Uh, they are an iconic part of America to a lot of people. But cars 
have long been central to American life as well. And what we've seen, interestingly, is that here's a picture of traffic deaths versus deaths from firearms. And at one time, traffic deaths far exceeded firearms in 1950. But over time, traffic deaths have gone down, while firearm deaths have remained re relatively constant. Now, of course, with regard to the right to bear arms, that's in the Constitution. But it's not an absolute right. That's why we outlaw machine guns and we regulate firearms in other ways. Sir, uh, with regard to traffic deaths and cars, the imposition of rules and regulations and laws, along with private industry adopting safer ways to drive and uh, devices to make them safer, have led to a reduction in traffic deaths. But the same cannot be said for firearms. Is that, isn't that right? I believe you're correct, yes. I, in looking at the traffic deaths going down, regulations both in vehicle safety, airbags, uh, speed enforcement, other things of that nature have led to safer roads. And what would that uh, lead you to believe should happen with regard to firearms? Some sensible regulations to uh, limit the carnage that's happening on our streets. Thank you, Commissioner. 